So after watching a lot of videos on YouTube about astral projection and lucid dreaming, I realized that I absolutely had to make this video. I just wanna share my thoughts with you guys about what I personally think about these two states. I've often been in the astral realm and transversed into the lucid dreaming state. And I've also been in the lucid dreaming state and transversed to the astral state. There is the potential that both of these are nothing more than states created by the mind. There's the chance that you're actually not leaving your body at all. You just, you know, you're dreaming, you're imagining you're leaving your body. That when you think you're in this astral realm, you're actually just having a lucid dream and you're imagining that, you know, say I'm laying on my couch right now and I astral project my, my astral body out and I walk around this room. I'm not actually in a different realm, I'm in the dream realm it's just, I have a memory of this room, so I'm creating the whole experience as it's happening. I'm imagining that I'm in the room. And I don't understand why so many people have such a difficult time accepting that this could be a possibility. These are just theories. Maybe there really is an astral state. I've mentioned in other videos that my entire life I've struggled with sleep paralysis. Now I'm sure a lot of you guys who are into astral projection know that a very interesting way to launch yourself into the astral realm is to start off from a state of sleep paralysis. Essentially sleep paralysis is when your body is asleep but your mind isn't. So your mind feels active but your body feels paralyzed. In fact, it takes a tremendous amount of effort to snap yourself out of it and move your body. It can often feel like you have someone sitting on your chest. It can be a bit scary because it feels like it's difficult to breathe. It's a very bizarre feeling and it's a feeling that for a time I got kind of used to. In fact, when I learned about astral projection, I started to access the states of sleep paralysis at will as a launch pad to get myself into the astral realm. I have followed techniques that I've read in eBooks. I've laid down and I've been able to close my eyes, get into a meditative state, and I've been able to push myself out of my body using the rope method, which is basically you visualize a rope and as your body falls asleep but your mind is awake, you visualize yourself crawling the rope until you jump out of your body. And I've had that experience. I have climb the rope out of my body. So that could be proof, right? That I actually am leaving my body? I don't know, I'm not convinced. It could also be proof that I'm just entering a lucid dream and in the lucid dream, I'm imagining that I'm leaving my body. So again, it's, I, I don't know for certain if there is a real difference between the two states. To give you guys a bit of history, I've been experiencing lucid dreams since longer than I can remember, like definitely before the age of 10. Point being, I've experienced lucid dreaming before I knew what lucid dreaming was. I don't think there's a lot of people who can say that they've been lucid dreaming their entire life. A lot of people need to learn how to lucid dream, whereas with me, there was a time when I would be having multiple lucid dreams a week. It was just very, very common for me. I've had some very profound astral projections. I've had experiences where I left my body, floated downstairs, and encountered entities, like this little demon looking girl, and I remember very vividly playing catch with her. In fact, I woke up and I drew a picture of her. But in that same regard, I've also had just as vivid lucid dreams. I remember one time, the way I entered the lucid dream state was, yeah, probably unlike a story you've ever heard in your life. I was in a desert and it was almost like we were in some kind of like a shootout, like Wild Wild West style, and I was running and I got shot poof, right in the back of the head. And I felt the bullet hit the back of my head and I instantly thought, okay, I should be dead now. It was really weird because everyone knows when they have falling dreams, right before they hit the ground, you usually wake up. So before I got shot in the head, I should have woken up. But instead of waking up, I fell over and I, I lifted my head up and I went, so I've just been shot in the back of my head, but I'm still alive. And then I was like, oh, I'm just dreaming. And it's funny because whenever I realize, oh, I'm just dreaming, I just instantly start floating. It's like floatability activated. And I just like start lifting in the air. And next thing I know, I'm soaring through the clouds. And <laughs> floating is very weird in a lucid dream because it's not always easy. Sometimes you think float and you start floating. And then sometimes you can have a difficult time staying in the air where you'll just start slowly dropping and no matter what you do, you can't keep flying. But anyway, I, I just can't relate to videos I've seen where people say that lucid dreaming and astral projection has changed their lives because it's just been something that I've done my whole life. Now, there's a lot of people who also seem to believe that the states you access during the DMT state 
and the states you access during the astral projection state are somehow the same dimension or it's a similar universe, I'm going to debunk this myth right now. They are 100% different states. Again, I know this is subjective to me, and there's probably people who are gonna come out and arrogantly refute this and say that I'm wrong. I don't know what I'm talking about. I know this sounds arrogant, but this is coming from a person who has been lucid dreaming slash astral projecting before they even knew that there was a word for the experience and who has had upwards of 100 DMT trips. Absolutely nothing compares to the DMT state. No lucid dream, no astral projection, even can hold a candle to the profound and just insanity of the DMT realm and the realness of it. It feels more real than real. There's no guarantee that it's all in your head, so to speak. They are not the same whatsoever. I've also read Tom Campbell's book and pretty much watched every video on YouTube on the guy. And he often talked about his time in the Monroe Institute where he would uh, remote view, where they would be in a room and they would leave their bodies and they would go find like say a piece of paper somewhere and they'd be able to recite what was written on that paper. My whole theory is, is if this was totally possible, wouldn't we have more proof than this? Like if it was 100% possible to astral project and remote view someone from somewhere else, couldn't we easily just take someone, put them in a room and then take someone else, right? And put them on the other side of the world and have a piece of paper with like some numbers written down, send the guy over there to remote view and then report back the numbers. I just, I just don't understand why there isn't more proof if things like this are possible, which further leads me to believe that lucid dreaming and astral projection are really one and the same thing. Anyway, in the future, I'm going to make a video explaining how to enter the astral state or the lucid state, and I'll probably elaborate more on why I believe they are the same thing. Again, these, these are just theories. Maybe there really is an astral state. I currently don't know, and there's not enough evidence for me to believe that there currently exists an astral state. But I think that is enough for today's video. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, be sure to leave a big thumbs up. And if you haven't already subscribed to our channel for weekly content, a huge shout out to everyone who's supporting us on Patreon. Your support really makes these videos happen. So thanks guys. Till next time, Take care, everyone. And yeah, let me know what you think in the comments section below. Do you think they're the same thing? And if you don't think they're the same, why? Please tell me why they aren't the same. And please offer some evidence that I can maybe relate to to change my mind. I, I haven't currently made my mind up. I'm still up in the air about whether they might be different. But I definitely am leaning more towards them being the same experience. Anyway, till next time, take care, guys.